this new video on my DIY remote control surface project where I'm gonna show the implementation of the very last piece uh, of, uh, of my interface uh, which is this guy this is the master feather which is the last feather that was missing um, uh, before to start as usual I would like to ask you to subscribe uh, to my channel if you like the content of the channel and you want to support my work uh, and to give a thumbs up to the video if you like the video of course so uh, a master fader uh, uh, as, as if you have followed the other videos uh, that I posted in the past you know that I have implemented eight channels with motorized faders and with the control of the strips so the arm the mute the solo and the select button plus the, uh, uh, the v pods the rotary encoder that is needed to control the various function and the various layer provided by the Mackie control protocol uh, the master fader is a little bit different because it only pr provides a slider a motorized fader and it doesn't have any other control in order to make it i have used the very same uh, um, uh, motorized fader drives for the channel which is the borns 100 millimeters 10 kilo ohm uh, linear potentiometer couplet with the uh, uh, DC motor. I have used uh, the same uh, here uh, uh, motor control that I used uh, in all the channel. Uh, it's a single channel motor control. Uh, uh, it's it comes with a package which is Soic 8. The cradle that you see here is just an adapter to bring the uh, um, the uh, Soic 8 to the format, the deep uh, uh, 2.54, uh, which is the format of the uh, breadboard. Uh, here you can see uh, the um, uh, voltage regulator because uh, exactly as it happened for all the other channels, the main voltage of the circuit is 9 volt, which is needed to power up and supply uh, the DC motor. So the voltage regulator brings the 9 volt uh, to 3.3 volt, which is needed to supply the microcontroller. And finally, we have the microcontroller itself. Uh, the microcontroller is an STM32F072. Uh, if you have, if you are following uh, my channel and you have seen the previous video, you know that I'm in a transition phase. I'm moving from the microchip Atmel platform, which is the platform that I used for the very far, first part of my project, to the STM32 platform. I started this transition uh, implementing the STM32H7 microcontroller, which is the main microcontroller controlling everything uh, inside the, uh, inside my project. Um, and now I'm implemented this uh, uh, Cortex uh, M0 Plus based microcontroller uh, in order to control the, uh, the master fader. Uh, all the other channels uh, uh, that, I that I implemented until now, I use the Sun D21, which is again, same thing, it's a, a microcontroller based on Cortex M0 Plus. Uh, in fact, I mean, this STM32 uh, microcontroller brings substantially the same a feature uh, that that I had uh, uh, in the Sun D21. So we have um, uh, a very good uh, ADC, 12-bit ADC, which is very fast. We have timers. The ADC is controlled by a timer and is uh, 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 configured in order to uh, uh, request a snapshot, so a conversion to the ADC every 55 microseconds. Uh, just I remember that one microsecond is uh, a million part of a second. It's very fast. I'm doing a lot of conversion and this is needed in order to control the, the slider uh, moving back and forth. This is faster than what I have done uh, in the Sun D21 and in fact it's more accurate and uh, less noisy and, and more smooth in the, in the movement. Um, I am using uh, a capacitive touch feature, okay, which is working very well. Uh, the peripheral into the world of, uh, of ST for a capacitive touch is called uh, TSC. Uh, this peripheral is available into the CubeMX uh, for being activated. And on top of this, uh, uh, ST uh, make available again through the uh, CubeID, the CubeMX, the configurator, a middleware, so a library, uh, in order to control and configure the TSC and really make the uh, setup of your 
uh, uh, of your uh, capacitive touch uh, uh, a nice and effective experience. The interface uh, and the middleware provided by ST is more complex and in my opinion more complete than the one provided by uh, uh, the microchip Atmel and here of course I'm talking about the Atmel Start interface because this is the, that's the one that I always used. Let's see the way it works. So as you can see here, we have the functionality of writing uh, uh, to the host and here we have the feedback. Uh, one note to this uh, feedback functionality, uh, it's working very well and I'm very happy and it's working better than uh, the one that I implemented in the other channels. Why is working better? Because in fact, I have programmed uh, the movement in feedback, the one that you see here, uh, in a little bit more complex way. So instead of establishing just one speed for every type of movement, uh, I have uh, segmented uh, possible speeds depending on the distance between the position of the, uh, uh, of the uh, motorized feather in a given moment and the points that it have to reach. So uh, the more is the distance, the delta, let's say, between the position and the point to reach, the more is the speed. Uh, then when it gets next to the point, it starts slowing down and until completely stopping. Uh, the more is uh, shorter the distance between the position and the point to reach, the less is the power that uh, I put in the movement. This gives me a, a very good reactivity, but at the same time when I move slowly, it moves in a very quiet and smooth way. Uh, which is something I never achieved say with the existing channels, the other channels. Uh, to be frank and honest, this is something that probably was possible to reach also with the microchip Atmel platform. This is just a matter of uh, uh, coding, so a uh, feature that I have coded. Uh, nevertheless, I mean, I, I, I managed to do it. So next step, so I mean, it works very well. I'm very happy. Next web, next step, now that I'm closed with the last element, is to set up the PCB of this uh, master feather uh, and to set up the PCB of my custom board, the one that you can see in the previous video, which by the way, I have reshuffled and uh, uh, set in a more, let's say, readable and ordered way. Uh, um, I think that the work of setting up the PCB for the master feather will be quite easy. I think that the setup, the work of setup the, B, the PCB for the custom board will be quite heavy. Uh, the custom board it reached a, a quite nice level of complexity. Uh, I think that it will not be possible, I guess at least, that it will not be possible to do it with just two layers. Probably I will have to do four, maybe six, which will increase the uh, complexity and by the way will increase also the cost unfortunately. And then as soon as these two boards will be ready and I will be ready to move on, probably I will uh, re-set uh, 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 all the channels, let's say the circuitry of the channel, again moving uh, to the uh, ST platform. Why I, I, mean, I move this in the existing channel to the ST platform if I said that the features are substantially the same? Because actually there is one feature more in the ST platform which is not available at least as far as I know, in the microchip one, uh, which is the quadrature encoding feature into the timer. Today, the channel is composed, let me show you. Today, the channel is composed, as you know, by a V-pot here, uh, which is um, a, a rotary encoder. In order to have a smooth functionality on the rotary encoder here, uh, uh, and given that the mm, Sun D21, the microcontroller that is controlling the entire strip, uh, was quite busy in many other things, I have been forced to add a second microcontroller that you see here, it's a Sun D11, uh, uh, in order to uh, control the V-Pot here and communicate the results via UART to the SD21, uh, um, to the Sun D21. Um, I've made a lot of experiments at that time and finally I managed to um, uh, reach a stable and very uh, 
uh, nice results only using this second uh, uh, microcontroller of course adding a second microcontroller is a more complexity and uh, its cost so thanks to the feature of the quadrature encoding that should be provided by this guy here um, actually not really by this guy here i will use another microcontroller which is called stm32 f302 uh, uh, which has uh, also the quadrature encoding Thanks to this, uh, I will be able to eliminate uh, one uh, microcontroller addition, which actually it's eight, because you have eight channels, uh, reducing the complexity and the cost. By the way, this is the, the custom board uh, reorganized, uh, and I'm very happy of the work done, because if you have seen the previous video, it was really a mess. So I'm happy about this. Um, I think that that's all. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, uh, where I hope I will be able to show the master feeder completed with the circuitry already on the PCB. Thank you very much. Cheers.